Beverly Community College. Beverly Community, yes. Thank you. And that's one thing I'd also advise is that if you're in high school, do not go straight to university. Even if you got a scholarship for that, I wouldn't recommend it because unless you're an all fully AP dual enrolled student at a college as well, and doing speech and debate, and doing like all those other stuff as well, I wouldn't recommend it. Not that you're not capable or anybody's not capable. It's just it's less stress in the community college. Instructors and professors are more apt to helping you. Smaller class sizes, they're more willing to help you. See, I would say unless you have a scholarship to a university, go to a community college for your basic core classes first. Yeah. See, that's just it, it's it's easier that way. I'm not saying universities are Horrible. bad. I'm I'm gonna go to NAU in Same. like a year. Only a year? I got four more years. I plan stuff. I'm gonna end in two years, and after only four years of college, I will have two associates and a bachelor's and a half. But you're the crackhead doing eighteen credit hours every yeah, semester. Yeah, but I I planned it. That's another thing is if you go into college and you're planning on getting more than one degree. See what degrees line up and maybe take the classes required for your the second degree that you want that as electives. Take those as electives because once you get that degree, they can't say those electives don't count as electives anymore because you take them because you already took them for your second degree because you already have that certificate. Because they count for both. That that's what I did. I went I went in, I went in for TV writing, but I've taken all of the feature writing for movies. I've taken all of those classes and all the different the classes that would be different between the two degrees as electives for my TV class. So I'm going to end up with two bachelors with only taking one extra semester. Can I just move in with you as you're making bank as a film, as, as a writer? Wait, writers don't make anything, do they? Um, no. Neither are, do teachers. Are you kidding me? I'm... <laughs> this is not... No. Neither of us joined our no. career for money. We clearly, do it because clearly, clearly we don't care where we, we live or what we do with our lives. We'll be living in the ghetto, so where we're as people long are as we're shot doing every day, it'll be great. It'll be my neighbor will be a drug dealer. It'll be fantastic. Okay, okay. We we need to get back on back on topic. Okay, okay. So another piece of advice that I would give is all of those high school essays that you're used to writing, and we're we're gonna be honest here. Very few people don't write with fluff sentences. <laughs> In their essays. <laughs> let me let me just tell you something here. Define fluff. Fluff? Oh, um, when you have something that you could say in one sentence in your essay, but you're gonna take four to say it. Oh, like because I Because you need to make the, the, the length <laughs> requirement, or because you know that you have like only two points to make in this paragraph and you need to BS this longer. But we're both guilty of that. In college. No, not in college. Yes, you are. No. If you do that in college, one, you're going to get a bad grade, and two, yeah. if if the <laughs> teacher really wants to make a point, they're going to ask you to explain <laughs> <laughs> this entire par exactly what point are you getting at? And they're going to make, they're going to do that to you until you break down those four sentences into <laughs> one and admit that that's one sentence, which sucks. Fluff will get you nowhere. And um, another thing is when you go into college and you, you're writing an argumentative or an informative essay, 